After two attempts at landing on a successful nameplate for its compact sedan line in the US, Kia is replacing the popular Forte with the 2025 K4. They don't look like they're pulling any punches with this thing either. It's sleek, modern, and now the largest in its class. Shall we take a closer look? Kia has seen a lot of success with the Forte, which replaced the Spectra way back in circa 2010. Currently in its third generation, the Forte offers value-oriented shoppers a solid alternative to the Toyota Corolla and the Honda Civic. This next generation model, though, seems like it wants to go up against the Mazda 3 as the most premium looking and feeling model in the segment. For a little history lesson, you already know that Kia renamed the long-running Optima sedan here in the US, the K5, when it was redesigned for 2021, aligning it with the global name that other markets have been seeing for years. The Forte we've been getting, known as the K3 in some markets and the Serato in other markets, got a refresh here a couple of years ago, but Kia didn't change the name to K3. The reason? The K3 name has now been shifted down a size to the Rio position. That's right, last year Kia Mexico revealed the all-new K3, and it is their direct replacement for the Rio there. That left the Forte position needing a new name, hence K4. Now if you're wondering about that Mexican K3, it's worth pointing out that Kia America did file a trademark for the K3 name not that long ago, so there's still hope that we might actually get a Rio replacement here known as the K3, giving Kia a three-pronged approach to the sedan lineup, a K3, K4, and K5. There's no official word on that just yet, so stay tuned. Now let's talk about the vehicle of the hour. The 2025 K4 uses two carryover powertrains from the old Forte, the 2.0-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder making 147 horsepower, and the 1.6-liter turbocharged four-cylinder that now makes a little bit less power than before, 190 horsepower versus 201 in the Forte GT. However, Kia is not talking about a K4 GT model at launch, instead the replacement for the Forte GT is the K4 GT Line Turbo. You can get the GT Line without the turbo, but with the turbo you do get a new transmission, an 8-speed automatic replaces the old 7-speed dual clutch. Unfortunately, however, the manual transmission option did not make the cut. Plus, Kia's IVT continuously variable transmission is still paired with that base 2.0-liter. We do hope that a K4 GT is in the works though. Could Kia fit that 2.5 turbo from the K5 GT into this larger K4? We'll have to see. On the outside, the K4 does look like a hatchback, but it turns out it is a traditional sedan, albeit one with a pretty large trunk. It has 14.6 cubic feet of space. The car is 185.4 inches long and 72.8 inches wide, making it the largest car in its class. Kia says this gives rear passengers the most headroom and legroom in that segment as well. Getting into that back seat now requires searching for the hidden door handle in the C-pillar. Let us know what you think of this look here. The nose of the K4 does differ slightly between the GT Line models and the non-GT Line models. You'll notice on the GT Line there's more depth to it and it has a more pronounced tiger nose look, but the regular K4 kind of strays away from that traditional Kia look. But both of them are good looking, if you ask me. There will be multiple wheel designs available, with the maximum at launch being 18 inches in size, and if you get the 18-inch wheels, you also get acoustic tires. Kia placed a pretty strong emphasis on noise, vibration, and harshness for the K4, so you will find an optional acoustic glass windshield as well. The K4's interior design is probably the biggest improvement over the outgoing Forte. This is the first model following the EV9 to get Kia's latest operating system, known as Connected Car Navigation Cockpit. They have heard the complaints about the dual function touch panel found in the EV6, the Sportage, and the most recently refreshed K5, Carnival, and Sorento. That is nowhere to be found. Instead, you actually have a center panel in between the instrument cluster and the main touchscreen. This panel is static, so all the HVAC controls you see here always stay here. You don't have to dig into menus or find different layers of the UI to get to certain functions. In fact, the buttons for the heated and cooled seats up front can be found over on the doors, and there are physical controls for other various HVAC and media functions down below the touchscreen. If you're curious to see how this setup works in real life, check out any existing video on the interior of the EV9. 
The system also has updated graphics, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard, a Hey Kia voice assistant with generative AI to help it improve its responses, as well as a digital key. Other notable things inside are the color choices. On the EX model, you can get this slate green color, and on the GT line, you can get this really cool two-tone off-white. I also love the GT line exclusive three-spoke steering wheel design. Non-GT line models get the two-spoke design you see here. Also exclusive to the GT line model is a multi-link rear suspension for improved handling. The K4 comes standard with safety features such as lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, a blind spot monitor, and rear cross traffic alert. But you'll have to pay extra to get forward collision avoidance, the blind spot avoidance and camera system, evasive steering assist, highway drive assist, a surround view monitor, or a parking distance warning system. Kia says this thing will be on sale in the second half of 2024, and that's all we know for now. What do you think? Personally, I'm pretty smitten with it, but I would love to see a high-performance K4 GT model to give shoppers of the Elantra N a Kia alternative. Where the life force.